وإلى وكتاب عمدة الأحكام للإمام الحافظ عبد الغني عبد الواحد المقدسي around the 60th hadith on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنه قال مر النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بقبرين فقال إنهما ليعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير أما أحدهما فكان لا يستت فكان لا يستتر من البول وأما الآخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة فأخذ جريدة رطبة فشقها نصفين فغرس في كل قبر واحدة فقالوا يا رسول الله لما فعلت هذا قال لعله يخفف عنهما ما لم ييبس أخرجه البخاري ومسلم This hadith is narrated by Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim Bukhari narrated this hadith in three places in his Sahih. Bukhari narrated this hadith three places in his Sahih. The first place he narrated it in is Kitab al Wudu. And he also narrated it in Kitab al Janaiz. And he also narrated it in Kitab al Adab. So three places Kitab al Wudu, Kitab al Janaiz, and Kitab al Adab. And the wording that we're doing is the wording of Bukhari. This hadith wording is Bukhari. Also, Muslim narrated in one place, which is Kitab al-Tahara. He narrated in Kitab al-Tahara. The Sahabi that narrated this hadith is Abdullah ibn Abbas. His name is Abdullah ibn, Abd, ibn, Abdullah ibn al-Abbas ibn Abd al-Muttalib al-Qurashi al-Hashimi ibn Amm Rasulillah. He is the cousin of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وحبر الأمة وبحر العلم وترجمان القرآن He is the scholar of this nation He is the ocean of knowledge He is the explainer and the uh, commenter of the Quran He is one of the four Abdullahis and he is one of the well known one of the greatest known companions رضي الله تعالى عنه a lot of sahabas narrated from him and another large amount of tabi'een have narrated from him his hadiths are in Bukhari and Muslim in the Qutb al-Sunan Sunan Abi Dawood, Sunan Ibn Majah, Sunan Al-Nisai, Sunan Al-Tirmidhi, Sunan Al-Darami and all of the books of Sunan you'll also find his hadith in the Masanid, Musnad, Ahmad, Musnad, all the Masanid you'll find it and all the Dawaween al-Islam, al-Matbu'at wal makhtuta The books that are published and those that are not published, you find his ahadith. He has a lot of virtues. One of the virtues that he has is that which Bukhari has narrated in his Sahih. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahumma allimhu al-kitab. Oh Allah, teach him the kitab. Imam al-Muslim's wording is, Allahumma faqihu fi al-deen. Oh Allah, give him understanding of this religion. <coughs> Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said about Abdullah ibn Abbas. He said, ذاكم, ذاكم There is that young boy whose beard is black. Lahu he has. Lisanun sa'ul. He has a, a very questioning tongue. And he has waqalbun aqul. And he has a heart that is very smart, intellectual. Abdullah ibn Abbas. He was born before the Hijra three years. And he died in Ta'if. He died in Ta'if. The year he died, Rahimah, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhu, was Sanat Thamarin, was Sitina. He died Thamarin, was Sitina, 68 Hijriah. And his age was at that time 71 years of age. This hadith, it talks about the punishment of the one who is the namam, the person who spreads um, information from people in order to bring what? To bring mischief between the people.
Yeah, what he does is, is that he goes and he spreads mischief on the earth regarding the people. So he, uh, to bring people to hate one another. So you would go, he would go, I would go, and then uh, he would, sorry, listen to me, and he would go to you and say, look, so-and-so said this about you. And then, you know, he'd come back to me and say, oh, you know what, what he said about you? And then, this is in the Mima. This is what this hadith deals with. And it also talks about, which is the more important topic, is the one who does not purify himself from the urine. You see, he doesn't clean himself from the urine. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Marra nabiyyu, the Prophet came by. Marra means what? Came by, crossed by. And nabiyyu, the Prophet did. Bi qabraini, two graves. So two graves he came by. Faqala, the Prophet said, Innahuma la yu'adhabani. These two people are being punished. Innahuma la yu'adhabani. This one and this one are both being punished in their graves. وَمَا يُعَذَّبَانِ فِي كَبِيرٍ And they are, not being worked, they are not being punished for something that is big. What does it mean they're not being punished for something big? Meaning, the matter in which they did was something which was easy to be left off. It was something they could have left. They didn't have to, like, protecting yourself from urine is not something hard. And not to make sure that urine doesn't touch your clothes and to make sure you clean yourself properly. It's something very simple that a person can do. Also, not to go around, the, uh, around and tell people about each other. Rather, it's more hard to go and spread news and stir problems. It's more, much more effort than just to be home and just relax and not do anything. So basically, what they did was uh, something... Uh, so, sorry, what they are being punished for, it's a matter in which it isn't big in terms of... It wasn't hard to leave it off. And then now the Prophet tells us what they are. As for one of them, as for one of them, he never used to, he never used to clean himself or purify himself from the urine. I mean, the urine would touch his clothes or would touch his body, and he wouldn't really give a lot of effort to it. He would just put his trousers on and he would go. Okay. As for the second one, he would walk around the earth. Staring people's information, like so and so said this about you, and so and so said this about you. So, what did the Prophet do when he told that each pe people who are in their graves, what the what what their their situation is? The Prophet took a twig, والسلام, that was wet, meaning it wasn't dry. He took it, the Prophet teared it into two, and so what did he do? فَغَرَسَهَا فِي كُلِّ قَبْرٍ and he placed one of those twigs huh, on each of the graves. And then the Prophet said, when the companions asked him, they said, Ya Rasulullah, lima fa'alta hadha? O Messenger of Allah, why did you do this? I mean, why are you doing this? The Prophet said, La'allahu yukhaffafu anhuma ma lam yaybasa. They would, the, the punishment of the grave that they're both enduring will be lessened for them. Huh? Whilst this is dry, uh, sorry, whilst this is wet, when it dries, their punishment will become, will come back again, will come back uh, again. The fiqh of the hadith. Number one, um, isbatu adab al qabr, affirming the punishment of the grave. This hadith is in Sahih al Bukhari and Muslim. It affirms the punishment of the, of the of the grave and that the punishment of the grave it is for the disbeliever as much as it can be for the believer as well the bis disbeliever gets punishment punished in the grave and so do the believers also get punished in the grave and this is a refutation to those who neg who refuse and who say there is no punishment of the grave at all that's what this hadith is a refutation on them and the punishment of the grave has been, it is present in the Quran and it has come mutawatir, multitude narration, the punishment of the grave. And the scholars who affirm that the hadith regarding the punishment of the grave is mutawatir is the ulama of Islam. The scholars of Islam have affirmed that the punishment of the grave has the narrations regarding it has come in a multitude narration. Mutawatir, multitude. It's not singular narration. It's multitude. From the scholars who said it is Badruddin al-Aini. 
in the Sharh of Bukhari, his book is called Umdatul Qari. He said, Umdatul Qari, he said, Walana Aydan, and for us is also a hadith, Sahiha, narrations which are authentic, wa akhbar, and a hadith which are what? Mutawatira. There are multitude. So Badruddin al Aini in the Sharh of Bukhari, Umdatul Qari, he referred to this a hadith. Uh, regarding the punishment of the grave, akhbar which are mutawatirah. The second person is Ibn Abi al-Iz al-Hanafi. Who? Ibn Ibn Abi al-Iz al-Hanafi. He said in the Sharh of Aqidat al-Tahawiyya, he said, وَقَدْ تَوَاتَرَةِ الْأَخْبَارُ The narrations have been transmitted to us on a multitude narration. عَلْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ from the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. في ثبوت عذاب القبر in affirming the punishment of the grave ونعيمه and its blessings لمن كان لذلك أهلا for whoever is the person for it meaning whoever is going to be punished by it وسؤال الملكين and the questioning of the two angels فيجب اعتقاده it is obligatory to believe in the punishment of the grave and it's also obligatory to believe in the questions, the questioning of the two angels. فيجب اعتقاد ثبوتي لذلك والإيمان به that you affirm it and you have belief of it. And then he goes into not talking about how it is. Zabidi, Imam Al Zabidi رحمه الله, he has a book called لقط الآلي المتناثرة, where he brings in that book the أحاديث which are متواترة, and he mentions that the عذاب القبر is mutawatir. Jalaluddin al-Suyuti, Jalaluddin al-Suyuti, rahimahullah, in his kitab, Sharh al-Sudur, he says, فَقَدْ تَوَاتَرَتِ الْأَحَادِيثُ بِذَلِكَ The ahadith regarding the punishment of the grave has come in a multitude narration. Mu'akkada, emphasized on, إِلَى سِتَّ وَعِشْرُونَ نَفْسًا سِتَّ وَعِشْرُونَ Twenty-six sahabas have narrated from the Prophet, he says. Al-Imam al-Safarini, in his kitab, لَوَامِعُ الْأَنْوَارِ In his kitab, لَوَامِعُ الْأَنْوَارَ الْبَهِيَّةِ He says, bringing from Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali, he said, قَالَ حَافِظُ ابْنُ رَجَبْ Al-Imam al-Safarini said, قَالَ حَافِظُ ابْنُ رَجَبْ وَقَدْ تَوَاتَرَتِ الْأَحَادِيثُ عَنِي نَبِي صَعَى سَلَمْ فِي عَذَابِ الْقَبْرِ The punishment of the graves, the ahadith that have come regarding it, have been transmitted to us on a multitude narration. القَسْطَلَانِيُّ القسطلان. He has a book called إرشاد الساري في شرح الصحيح البخاري. He said قد تظافرت قد تظاهرت الدلائل من الكتاب والسنة على ثبوته وأجمع عليها للسنة ولا مانع في العقل أن أن يعيد الله الحياة في جزء من الجسد أو في جميعه على الخلاف المعروف فيثيبه أو يعذبه. He says that it has become apparent with evidence from the kitab and sunnah in affirming ها and the punishment of the grave, and that unanimous agreement upon Ahlul Sunnah, and that it is 